My name is Mina Park from Hong Kong University Medical Center. I will cover about our recent review article named Structure and Memory Missing in the Diagnosis of Alzheimer's Disease and Other Neurodegenerative Dementia, Current Imaging Approach and Future Perspective. Alzheimer's disease, the most common cause of dementia, is characterized by progressive neurodegeneration, accompanied by cognitive impairments that interfere with the activities of daily living and ultimately impose heavy economic burdens on the patient and the patient's family. It caused by the accumulation of extracellular beta-amyloid protein and intracellular tau protein. Interestingly, they deposit in brain special temporally in a predictive manner, and this pattern of accumulation can be observed by structural MRI. Recent studies have found that the pathologic timeline of Alzheimer's disease may begin years to decades before clinical diagnosis with an initial asymptomatic phase, followed by a phase with mild cognitive impairment and 10 to 15 percent of mild cognitive impairment subject progress to Alzheimer's disease. Mentioned earlier, Alzheimer's disease begins with amyloid deposition and plaque formation, and subsequently abnormal tau protein phosphorylation leading to neurofibrillary tangle formation and accumulation of amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles contribute to neural and synaptic loss and finally to brain critical atrophy. This critical atrophy can be observed in structural MRI even before my cognitive impairment phase and may help the clinical diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease and Alzheimer-associated pathology. Structural imaging can be a mirror of dementia pathology, as specific patterns of critical atrophy and vascular pathology distinguish typical Alzheimer's disease from other neurodegenerative dementias. Thus, identification of critical atrophy patterns and vascular pathology are the important for accurate and effective usage of MRI in patients with cognitive impairment. So, in this article, we'll cover the critical atrophy, the pattern of critical atrophy, and subjective visual scale for various causes of dementia and vascular pathologic findings. Again, accumulation of amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles in Alzheimer's disease induce neural and synaptic loss that finally leads to critical atrophy. Simply speaking, critical atrophy typically occurs first in the hippocampus and associated entorhinal cortex prior to further progression, and it is considered to be an early marker of neurodegeneration. Furthermore, the degree of hippocampal atrophy on antemotum MRI has been demonstrated to be correlated with the postmortem severity of neuropathologic changes in Alzheimer's disease. In the following section, we'll discuss specific atrophy patterns and atrophic scales employed for quantification. Diffuse critical atrophy is a common finding in various pathological status such as stroke, radiation treatment, and neurodegenerative disorders as well as in normal aging. The global critical atrophy scale was first introduced as a tool to quantify this kind of atrophy in stroke patients with or without dementia. Even it has predictive value for dementia and associated mortality, it is more likely to be confounded by age than other atrophy scales as it covers large brain areas. Changes of the medial temporal lobes are important because they are commonly found in association with different stages of Alzheimer's disease and mild cognitive impairment, but are less commonly related to normal aging and even incorporated into the criteria for probable Alzheimer's disease. Medial temporal lobar atrophy was first quantified by Stelsons et al. using a five-point subjective scale evaluating the width of the surrounding CSF stasis and the height of the hippocampal formation, as you can see on the right side of this slide. It showed good correlation between scale values and linear measurement. These findings suggest that visual medial temporal lobar atrophy ratings might provide constructive and rapid assessment for diagnosing 
or excluding Alzheimer disease in clinical practice. However, because of its low inter-observer reliability, several other scales have been also suggested. Early posterior cerebral involvement has emerged as an important aspect of Alzheimer's disease as it appears to be a feature of early onset Alzheimer's disease. Therefore, posterior cortical atrophy combined with relatively sparing of medial temporal lobe may characterize a typical presentation of Alzheimer's disease patient, as you can see on the right side. Frontal temporal lobar atrophy was used in the assessment of frontal temporal dementia, and it is an example of behavioral variant frontal temporal dementia. It is important to understand that frontal temporal lobar atrophy scales have been developed with selective focus on differential diagnosis of frontal temporal dementia, not for its differentiation from Alzheimer's disease. Semantic dementia is characterized by semantic memory impairment with preservation of episodic memory and showed primarily involvement of the left anterior inferior and anterior middle temporal lobe with relative sparing of the posterior temporal lobe in semantic dementia as opposed to generalized atrophy in Alzheimer's disease which can be an helpful differential diagnostic clue. Asymmetric critical atrophy can be observed either in non-fluent aphasia variant of frontal temporal dementia and critical basal degeneration, and in non-fluent aphasia variant of frontal temporal dementia, bilateral asymmetric perisilbian atrophy can be observed as seen on the right side. White matter hyperintensity has emerged as a strong correlate of cognitive aging and Alzheimer's disease. Recent studies have provided strong evidence that white matter hyperintensity plays a causative role in cognitive decline and dementia and might lead to Alzheimer's disease by contributing in an additive or synergistic manner to disease and even they may be a part of a pathologic continuum. Lacoons assume as a remnant of symptomatic or silent or subcritical effects appearing central to the most common cause of vascular dementia. Patients with Alzheimer's disease are more likely to have lacoons on MRI than individuals without dementia, and also the patients with lacoons are more likely to have dementia for the reason that patients with effects require a lower burden of plaques and tangles for clinical diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. With regard to dementia, microfleas have drawn research attention as potential mediator of cognitive impairments as they are more commonly found in the patient with mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease, and vascular dementia. Emerging evidences shows that cerebral microinfarcts are associated with cognitive decline and dementia, particularly if they are multiple and critical. Moreover, cerebral microinfarcts can occur in cognitive normal people, but the prevalence is higher in Alzheimer's disease. To make a systemic approach to structural imaging evaluation for differential diagnosis of dementia, the first thing that must be determined is whether the patient has any focal lesions such as those due to stroke, tumor, or vascular malformation, or if the patient has hydrocephalus. Second, the presence of medial temporal lobar atrophy must be determined as medial temporal lobar atrophy indicates a high probability of Alzheimer's disease. Third, the degree of white matter hyperintensity and the presence of microfleas should be assessed in order to verify Alzheimer's disease or classify the type of dementia. If a patient is categorized as having another dementia, the special pattern of brain atrophy must be more carefully evaluated as we reviewed earlier. Frontal temporal lobar atrophy is indicative of frontal temporal dementia. If the frontal temporal lobar atrophy has a right predilection, behavior variance is indicated, whereas a left predilection indicates semantic dementia. Periinsular atrophy with a left predilection or less commonly with a right predilection indicates progressive non-fluent aphasia. 
alternatively presents a period to speeder atrophy, such as neurodegenerative disease such as a posterior cortical atrophy, cortical basal degeneration, or dementia with Lewy bodies. Advanced structural MRI may also help the early diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, even they need much further studies in the future. Recent DTI studies showed abnormal decrease of FA values in Alzheimer's disease and mild cognitive impairment subject due to loss of track integrity. And even DTI measurement can be help identify patients with mild cognitive impairment who are likely to progress to Alzheimer's disease. Quantitative susceptibility mapping can be used to evaluate ion overload potentially associated with neurodegenerative disease, and a previous study shows increase of susceptibility in vascular dementia as well as Alzheimer's disease, and the figure on the right side and is the example of Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia. Finally, magnetic transfer imaging may also help the early diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease as reduced MPI value in hippocampus was found in very mild Alzheimer's disease. It is believed that pathological accumulation of soluble and non-soluble proteins preceding cell deaths, leading to alteration in the local composition of macromolecules preceding critical atrophy. For the reason that most patients with suspected dementia are elderly and represent a distinct population, a tailored MRI protocol is mandatory. In this article, we have provided such an MRI protocol which was initially devised for the Korean ADNI study by modification of ADNI protocol. In conclusion, imaging a patient with cognitive decline has clear utility not only for excluding diagnosis, but also for the differential diagnosis of neurodegenerative disorders. Radiologists should be aware of the advantages and limitations of modern imaging so that the imaging protocol can be optimized for diagnostic use. Thank you very much for your attention.